right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for our second ladies semi-finals. It is between England and Finland. Please welcome first to the stage a lady with more than 200 ranked titles all across the world. She is the heart of darts from England, Dita Hetman. Dita's opponent is from Finland. 15 WDF ranking titles to her name. Please welcome Kirsi Vinikainen. In the WDF women's singles final, and now we will witness the second semi semi final between Dieter Hedman, who's in front of the camera here, against Kirsi Vinnik. Oh, that's a that's a very difficult name, Andrew. Uh, Kirsi Vinikainen. Thank from you, Finland. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Kersey, I actually marked her first game in the women's singles against the Raymond Stanley. And, you know, I've seen Kersey play over a number of years, but the thing that always strikes me, she's just relentless. There's always one treble in every visit. She's not going to blow you away with ton 40s, ton 80s, but every visit it's 95, 85, 100, 81, 95. And it's just... You know, if you're not on it in the scoring point of view, if you have 60, 60, 45, you're suddenly miles behind. Um, and she's so calm and composed. So she doesn't tend to show an awful lot of um, emotion. And, you know, she's going up against someone in Dieter Hedman. I don't think many players have more fun playing darts than Dieter Hedman. No, I'm kind of embarrassed watching her walk up on stage. I mean, she's 63, but she's clearly in much better condition than I am I wouldn't be able to jump around like that and then be ready for a darts match she is 
She's amazing in, in more than just the darting apartment. Yes, no, she's a fantastic ambassador for the game, um, you know, and someone who's very, very passionate about youth darts. You know, that's one of her big, her big passions. And, you know, earlier this year, she actually fundraised all the money that got the England team to the Europe Youth Cup. So, um, you know, she, she loves this system. She loves playing for her country. And I know she's now, because of her performances this week in... You know, the pairs with Bo, we saw them win that last night in the singles where she's here in the semi-final. She's now won more medals than anyone else in World Cup history, um, which is a tremendous achievement. You think she was playing in the World Cup in 1993, I think was her first one. Um, but let, let's not forget that she actually had quite a long spell away from the game. So there was a number of years where she would have been good enough to, to play for the... Oh, let's have a look at this oh, 140, but she could have made that tally of of titles much higher than it really is. She is an incredible player and in my eyes the best female player who has never won a world championship. Yes, yeah, been close, been to three finals and none of them have quite worked for her, but yeah, she's just, she's a fantastic person. She's a fantastic ambassador for the sport. And I think, you know, she's she's obviously aware that she's getting a little bit older and she's sort of talking, oh, maybe this will be my last World Cup. I don't believe I it. I think <laughs> she's got at least one more in that. But she played some really good darts on the floor earlier in the tournament. Um, comfortable wins in her first three or four games. And then a, a vintage battling performance to beat Anka Zilstra, uh, her good friend. Oh. All right, have a look at this. It's on for the bull. She actually did she this. She surprised that she was yeah. on the ball. <laughs> she actually did this in the <laughs> Denmark Open and Masters earlier this year. I believe it was the 1-6-1 finish. Perhaps it was the 1-6-4. Yes. I, you will remember better than I do. But, uh, <laughs> no, she... You know, it, it's one of those things. that the, the game with Anka, she played on the floor... Anka led 4-1 and then Dieter battled back to 4 all. Anka missed I think it was 5 darts to win and then Dieter took it out so um, you know not luck but she certainly you know was under pressure survived that pressure and she takes the first leg against the darts in this final with 14 darts so positive start for you know Dieter but you know she's someone who always sees the positive in things. I think her favourite phrase is, it is what it is. Which, having interviewed her several times, I've heard that a number of times when I've asked her questions that she's just like... Well, to me, that sounds like a very English saying. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's not going to stress. As long as she has a good time, she gets to dance and have a little sing, she's she's happy. Um, it is what it is, Andrew. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, but I've got quite an interesting stat for you. You just <coughs> spoke about Kirsi being this player who, here as she hits a 30 in her first visit, but pretty much always had a treble in her, in her scoring visits. Now, if you have a look at the overall averages, then there's no doubt that Dieter is the favorite for this match. Dieter throughout the tournament has averaged 77, while Kirsi is almost 10 points behind in the averages but if you have a look at the first nine average then Kiersey is averaging 83 which is half a point higher than Dita so she in this first scoring part of the game she has actually done better than Dita despite having an overall average overall average 10 points below this is something you rarely see this is quite a f an incredible stat to me hmm. yeah no she's she's just one of those players that you know she she does score well in that you know there's one treble per visit and it usually in the game she plays it's enough to give her the chances to then win the leg um, she had a couple of close games on the way to here I think it was uh, Susiana Hogval from Sweden pushed her to a last leg decider <coughs> but you know, she's, she's just 
and obviously Lorraine went standing in that first round, which was a, a fun game to mark. Um, but yeah, she's a she's a brilliant player. She's won four titles on the WDF circuit this year, two in Estonia, two in her native Finland. And uh, her partner is a, a successful darts player as well, playing at this year's World Cup, Johan Engstrom of Sweden. So I'm sure Johan will be down the front cheering on his partner, uh, hoping that she, she does well. She's already, you know, she's guaranteed two medals in this tournament because her and Sari Salvola got to the women's pairs final yesterday. Uh, and she's got at least a bronze here, but I'm sure she'll be hoping she can get to the final and, you know, maybe maybe win Finland a gold against Bo. It's Dita first to a finish in this leg, 52 after 15, whereas Kersey is on 194. So hopefully, or she'll be hoping she can make a dent in this if she finds a treble. Dita has started this match extremely well, winning the first leg in just 14 darts. She will probably go for a single 12. Hits the treble, so that leaves 16, double eight. And very efficient on the doubles. Yeah. Not flustered by that going in the treble, you know, so she, yeah. Very strong start from Hedman, 14 data, 17 data. Leads 2 0 here in this again, race to six legs. And we just saw Bo winning her semi-final with a 78 average. Kiersey is right now averaging 79, but still <laughs> haven't, hasn't won a leg yet. So she isn't playing badly at all. It's just Dita with a brilliant start to this match. Yeah, Dita's been very clinical so far in these first two legs. Um, you know, this is what she's capable of. And in recent, you know, recent tournaments, she has been playing to a good standard. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think it was the British Open weekend. I think she won a title. Um, and she's, she's won a couple of titles this year. I mean, she's 220-something ranking titles. I'm never sure of the exact number. But I, I do remember she went through a phase, I think it was 2021, just after the lockdowns had finished and the tour had resumed. She had a shirt that had the number of titles she'd won on the back. And she played the tournament and then the shirt was out of date because yeah. she'd won another <laughs> one and then another one. And then, you know, by the time she'd ordered another one, she'd won another two titles. So it was wrong again. So, um, you know, with Bo coming on the scene, she's not as dominant as she, she used to be. But she's still obviously one of the top players in the system. Um, and, you know, an obvious first name on the team sheet and an obvious captain for the England team at this World Cup. And that's often something you have to take into consideration as well when you're... I know the England team are, are selecting their players a bit different to how we do it in Denmark, but experience and just your personality as a whole is also a very big factor when, when you have to put four teammates together. Yeah, and there's no doubt that Dita is a, a brilliant captain. She has tried it all. She's still a great darts player, and she's also just a, a good teammate. Uh, as I said yesterday, I don't think you can find anyone who has a bad word about her. Perhaps her opponents who think she's too good, <laughs> but that's not really anything to do with her personality. <coughs> Apologies. <coughs> no, I'm just dying over here. No, I mean, she's a perfect person to have around. You know, she's warm, she's funny, she's bubbly. She always tries to see the positive in things. But, um, you know, she's also, as you say, she's been there, she's done it. You know, we would say in England, she has the T-shirt to prove it. She's basically seen everything in darts that's possible. And if she's not seen it, it's very doubtful anyone's seen it. So, you know, she brings so much to that team. And I think you look at the England team this year... You know, you've got another experienced face on the men's side uh, with Scott Mitchell. But 
You've also got, you know, guys like Jamie Atkins and Reese Coley who are new to the team. And, you know, those young kids who are, you know, 15, 16 playing for England. Having someone like that with you makes a real difference because you know that she's going to be able to guide you, give you advice. Oh, you know. sorry, Andrew. Here's another chance for a big, 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 big finish. She may decide to go for the six, but I think she's going for the double. <laughs> No, we've not seen one of these yet. Would be nice if Kirsty can do it here. First start pitch is a bit low. Could find with that last start, puts a little bit of pressure on this 19 from Hedman, who has been very clinical on the outer ring so far. Yeah, she opts for the three and double eight route here. Please. I have to admit, marking Dieter's games is always always a bit of a challenge with those darts that, you know, wobble. You don't get bounce outs, which is good, but you sometimes, particularly if I forgot to put my glasses on, it's like, you know. Where's that landed? That's a great first dart from Kersey. Setting herself up two shots at double 16. That's a, a poor dart into the fat seven. So she's got 25 left. I'm guessing she'll go for a single nine here. Finds oh, a trouble and she that's busted. unfortunate. It's the pressure playing for a spot in the World Cup final and now Dieter's got three darts at 16 to take a 3-0 lead here that looks like a decent marker even though she has to step a bit to the right halfway to victory now for Dieter and another break of throw so it's a very strong start from the English woman but that was that was the first leg I feel where Kirsty had a really good chance uh, to get on the scoreboard and after a great first start didn't really work out for her you hear the dulcet tones of Marco Meyer our referee for this game it would a uh, good opportunity for me to to say what a great job the WF team have done this week with uh, the World Cup you know Marco Jacques uh, MC but also Christian Sorensen and uh, uh, Nick Rolls, the WF team, as well as tournament director Ayan Deval and his partner Marika. A brilliant job the whole team have done this week, organising everything. And of course, our wonderful hosts here in Esbjerg, led by Carsten Jeppesen and his team. So, been a really good tournament. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I think everybody else has too. And uh, it's exciting that we're now getting to the the big matches now, the singles finals and the, the team finals, which are always an entertaining, entertaining part of it. Most players would have started on 19s here on 309. This looks like a good dart to follow from Kiersey. She's got an unusual throw in that she grips the dart very straight and very upright and then sort of launches it forward. Um, not hugely dissimilar to Dita's throw either. They both kind of approach in the same fashion, but, you know, it works for her. It's not quite the Willa Mandigas get your thumb under it and... That is one throw I tried to replicate at home so many times and I just hit the floor every time. I couldn't work out how he did it. <laughs> I asked him to show me once and he just sort of was like, oh, it's like this. And I sort of had to say, Willem, I, I don't understand. I'm sorry. There's another throw that I have been trying to replicate that I just, I don't, I can't understand how that's possible. Have, have you seen the clip of Wayne Marl just blowing the dart into the dartboard? 
I can't get it to reach more than 20 centimeters into the board. <laughs> I, it's how that is possible. I I just don't get it. <laughs> no, no, no. I d no, it's beyond me. I, I, the late Carl Anderson, his throw always used to fascinate as me as well because. I didn't really understand how it worked, but it did for him and it worked to great effect. And, uh, you know, he's someone that's hugely missed by everybody in the, the world of darts. But, yeah, his throw was always a quirky one, I'll put it that way. Yeah, very much so. Of course, the Alexandra Palace nine darter, we all remember it very well. Now Dieter Hedman on double top here to make it 4-0. Now, is that blocking the double from her perspective? Good first start here. 45 left. That leaves double top. A very good effort. Pens the wire there. So Dita will come back three darts at double ten to take a 4-0 lead in this semi-final. <coughs> now she needs to hit a single one. But bust the score. And that gives Kersey the chance to get her first leg on the board. Not the most conventional way to take out 40, but a lovely double one, double 19 there from uh, the Finn, Kersey Vinikainen. So she's got a break back. That's one of the two back. She's now throwing to make it 3-2 in this final, which is a reminder is first to six. And the winner plays, well, the reigning world champion, the reigning world master, the reigning women's world match play champion. Well, stop, Andrew. We can't. You can't list all the titles. We don't have time for that. Yeah, we'll be finished the men's team game by the time I've finished all the titles she's won, yes. I'll probably be still be here next week if we try to do Dieter's, so, you know. <laughs> A couple of accomplishments is fine. But it is quite funny looking at Kersey's way to the final. As you said, you, you had the the privilege of marking her first game at, against Lorraine Wynne Stanley, who was another potential candidate for not just making her way to the semi-final, but also to win the title. But she played against Kersey in the first round and even though she has played six matches up until now, there's no doubt that was the toughest match and on paper also her hardest uh, opponent before this semi-final. So this is what happens sometimes with these kinds of tournaments where you don't really have this normal system of seedings that refers back to the world rankings. Yeah, no, the, I think, you know, the open draw is one of the most exciting parts about, you know, the World Cup and, and you know, the, the WDF Regional Cups because, you know, if you if you look at the men's pairs, for example, uh, when we got down to the last 16, I think it was, the top four teams were Hopai Puha and Ben Robb from New Zealand, Raymond Smith and Peter Machen from Australia, Berry Van Peer and Wesley Plazier from the Netherlands and James Hurrell and Scott Mitchell from England. Now... Only one of them could make it through to the semi-finals. And you're like, oh, wow. You know, they're all teams that people would have expected to win, but the open draw threw them all together. And it's the same with the singles. You know, Kersey probably would have been seeded because of how well she's done on the tour this year with those four titles. Dieter, of course, would too. Um, as would Lorraine. You know, Lorraine obviously is you know, one of the top players in the, the WDF system. So it does throw those tough first round games together um, and it sometimes means that the draw can then open up and you see surprising people come through uh, you know that's certainly much more true in the men's tournament where we had eight different nationalities in the last eight and we had 
you know, Carla Sarola of Catalonia or Frank Bruns of, of Germany, people that others wouldn't necessarily have expected to be there. You know, the draw fell for them and they played well. I think it, it does add a good dynamic. I know some of the the players would rather it was seeded, but there's no way that would work, you know. You need to make sure that one England player is in each quarter of the draw, so then it's not fair, and you have to then do that for Bulgaria and Turks and Caicos and Canada. And, you know, it's always a, a tough balancing act. I think Arya, now tournament director, he does a fantastic job. His spreadsheets are far too complicated for me, but he makes sure everything works. Um, but, yeah, the open draw is brilliant because... You know, Lorraine with Stanley is a good example. <clears throat> she played Kersey first round in the women's singles and she played uh, alongside Claire Brookin. They played Robin Byrne and Katie Sheldon of Ireland in the first round of the pairs, which could you have picked two worse draws? Probably not. Um, but yeah. it's not a 170, but a great visit there from Dieter down to 36. But Kersey will have a chance at this 88. Uh, but yes, I think the open draws are great because it, it really gives every country more of an opportunity because, you know, of course, the tour where most events are is weighted to those countries that run a lot of tournaments. So it'd be weighted towards the European players. But also Australia and New Zealand have run a lot of competitions in the last two years. So it would be weighted to their players who've, who've made the journey over here. And, you know, they're all good players. Don't get me wrong. Raymond Smith, Peter Machen, Kim Mitchell, tremendous players. But... This frees it up and really means that all 49 countries have got an equal footing in this tournament. And for me, that's a really cool thing to, to see. <laughs> Kersey made a bit of a mess of that 88, only took nine off it and Dita capitalises, taking out double 18 at the second time of asking. She now leads 4-1. Of course, this is, this is being streamed on the, the Danish Darts Union YouTube channel, also on the WF YouTube channel. And uh, just had a message to say that uh, Rory Hansen of Canada, who played at the Lakeside last year, uh, you know, wanted to shout us out for doing a good job. So uh, thanks for watching, Rory. Hope you're well, man. Take care. Great player. Lovely guy. And I hope to see you soon, Rory. Um, good start from both ladies to the six legs, both hitting a ton each. Um, yeah, I th Kersey's not done a huge amount wrong in this game. The, the last leg, the 88, wasn't she wasn't really able to make a dent in it. But Dieter's just been really, really steady all the way through. I'm not sure how we're looking on the averages front, but certainly feels that Dieter's probably in that mid 70s range. Yeah, right now, if we just have a look at the averages, Dieter is averaging 78, while Kersey is back on 67. Perhaps we would have expected a bit higher, a bit better performance from Kersey, but still, let's remember this is a semi-final of, yeah, of a huge competition. This really means a lot to the players and it just adds th that extra pressure. Yes, of course. I think it was 43 countries had women's teams in this tournament, so a bit of maths. 43 times 4 is... 170 players I think something like that um, 136 by my quick calculations oh no no 43 but yeah ah. so yeah 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 so I think it's 172 yeah there we have it glad uh, the English maths education <laughs> <laughs> helped me for once um, but yeah no it's a great tournament and, and just a great you know the, the team, the WF team, did a good job with the stream during the week of trying to make sure that every country was represented. So it wasn't always the headline games that were on the stream. They wanted to try and give everyone exposure. So I'd be walking around on the floor and I'd suddenly look up and it's, you know, Switzerland against Luxembourg or, you know, Slovakia against Jersey or whatever. And it was like, oh, this is, you know, it's a cool opportunity for those players who've travelled a long way, often funded themselves from the smaller countries. <clears throat> to get that stage exposure. Um, 61 here from Dita after 12. Another good leg this from her. If she takes this out, she'll just be one away from victory. Single nine, single 12, leaves a one shot at tops. Just a bit high there. Actually a good leg from both players. I think Kersey would have been 
satisfied with leaving 138 after 12. Yes. Oh, this would be a big finish if she can take it out. Started well with that treble 20, 78 to go. Head over to the 18s. Finds the single, so she will go back there. Leaves herself on tops. But Dieter's got three chances to move 5-1 up here. Bit low that time round. We'll move to the 10s. This is a big chance, you feel, for Kersey to get back on the board. A really big chance and also not just a chance to win a leg but even break the throw. I thought, those, bad effort. I thought the first two were good markers because they were both sort of a similar height, but <coughs> slight overcorrection there from Kersey, which means Dieter will get another chance over at double ten. Inside goes to the fives. Inside again. Oh. Left herself in the madhouse on double one, but will she get another chance? Kirsty here on double ten herself. She really needs to take this, you feel, to cut the gap to 4 2 and stay in this semi final. She goes inside with two of her darts as well, so she's got five left. No margin for error here for Dita on double one. Just the wrong side of the wire into double 18. She busts. So Kersey gets probably an unexpected chance here to try and take out five. Still Dita isn't looking too stressed about this situation. She will, of course, have preferred to have left the double ten once again, but here she is, sat on double one. Here we go. Second dart in hand. <coughs> Pins the double two. It's now four two. And if she can hold here, Kersey, it's suddenly game on once again. Um, not the her start she was hoping for I'm sure that 22 um, but no she's a she's a very underrated player I feel Kersey she's someone who's always been successful um, you know, within her region, when she's travelled outside of Finland, she's often had success, but she doesn't do a huge amount of the tour. Um, but with four tournament wins this year, she's obviously in a good position, you know, looking ahead to, to Lakeside next year. And I know I would, I personally would be really excited to see her play on that stage because I think she's, she's a really quality player. Uh, and it would be good for Finland too, because as far as I remember, there's not been a Finnish woman play at Lakeside. It might have been, but it was probably quite a while ago. I can't think of who else it would have been. I know this year from the uh, Northern Europe region, it's Anna Forsmark of, of Sweden, who uh, really good player, lovely person as well, Anna. Um, she qualified through that system, so she'll be playing at Lakeside. But, you know, Kersey is in pole position for next year at the moment after some successful runs. So maybe... She might look at that and think, oh, maybe do a couple more tournaments next year, maybe go to Sweden or, or whatever. So, um, yeah, she's a very good player. And, you know, both ladies have made a slow start to this seventh leg. But that ton gets the fin back on the right track. We spoke about earlier in this match how Lorraine Wynne Stanley had some brutal draws in her singles and and pairs matches but I was just thinking about another player when I thought about Curse's teammate male counterpart Marco Cantelay who 
in the singles event, he played against Mendaukas Barauskas from Latvia, who Marco would have been favorite, I, I would say. However, he did play with almost a 90 average, which you would expect to be good enough. But Barauskas averaged 99. So, well, Cancelé lost that first round match 4-2. And then <laughs> in the pairs match, he played against Barry Van Pee and Wesley Plessier who played with the 103 average. So he has been playing against opponents averaging 100, while he himself has averaged 90 in both games. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's that, I mean, that really is the, the quirk of it, really, is that, you know, you could get a horrible draw and then, you know, you know you're out early, which is tough, but um, I think that's, you know, that's where the fun of the kind of overall table works out because it's kind of about the whole collective effort and even if your star player doesn't necessarily perform in the way you'd think they would they you would expect them to if other players can make a positive run you know then that's obviously really impressive you know you look at the men's tournament uh, Jake McMillan from Canada he won the national championships i believe earlier this year played a lot on the CDC circuit he got to the last 32 i think it was uh, of the men's singles but didn't really cut through in the way that he maybe wanted to he started with a 106 average and I thought okay maybe McMillan's going to be the man to watch but you know you then look at it and it's you know it's his compatriot Robbie Mills who's in the semi-finals we'll see very soon um, I guess the other surprise is Belgium Andy Barton's WF number one I think you know most people see him as the favourite you know, for Lakeside later this year. Dieter misses the big 20 on his 78. Um, I'll come back to that point about Andy Bartons in a minute. Uh, Kersey with a chance here to move to 4-3. Three, three dots at tops. Inside on her first. Ooh. A wild one there into the six goes for double seven and misses so Dita comes back for tops to break back and move five two ahead in this semi-final Dieter now leads 5-2, took out that tops. And uh, on the note of Dieter, I'd like to give a mention to her partner, Paul, uh, who's over here, one of the England team managers. Uh, he's not able to be here in the venue today. Uh, was feeling a little bit rough yesterday. Uh, sore throat, coughing and so on. Uh, and he feels pretty bad today as well. So he's not here, but I'm sure he'll be watching the stream, cheering on from his hotel room and hoping that, you know, Dieter can get to the, the final, which she looks in a strong position to do here, just one leg away. Uh, Kersey, you know, needs a couple of breaks, needs to hold her throw for the first time, and then we maybe get another bull up on the stage. But we're a long way from that at the moment. It's very much Hedman in the driving seat. But on the point of Belgium, you know, you look to the Belgian team and it wasn't maybe the strongest team people could have picked on paper, but... You look at a team that's got Andy Bartons and you think, oh, well, there's there's your banker for points. But him and Jerome Caron lost fairly early on in the pairs. And then in the singles, Andy was beaten by Raymond Smith in a, a game I had the pleasure of watching. Um, a very dramatic game in which uh, there was a, a miscount issue where uh, Raymond bust 90. He took out 110 rather than taking out 90 um, because he'd you know, mis miscalculated what he was on. That was to win 4-1. Andy then won the next two legs and won the bull up in the last leg. Um, but, you know, and then I think he missed four match darts, something like that. And then Raymond took out a big finish, 96. 96, so yeah. yeah. Which I seem to think was treble one, treble 19, double 18. Um, nerves of steel from Raymond Smith, who is also a lovely person, uh, a really nice guy. And, uh, yeah, that was a tough defeat for, for Andy to take. I know he was very frustrated by that one, but 
a hell of a, a hell of a game to watch. A hell of a game to watch. Yeah, I'd imagine. I mean, Raymond Smith was actually my favourite for this tournament before uh, the first games were played. Uh, of course, Andy Barton's another great candidate. We also have the a player who's still in the tournament, Barry Van Peer. Another big favourite beforehand. But now it's all about this leg, because it seems like Dieter Hetman will be in a very strong position to finish this match off and then book a place in the final against Bo Reeves. Yes. Uh, they're, uh, yeah, no, and Kersey unable to find a treble in that last visit to really put any pressure on Dieter, who finds a treble of her own. So she's now down to 150, so first to a finish. Let's see if Kirsty can apply any pressure here. Maximum would obviously be great, and she started in the right way. And this is where you would have seen some players go for the 18s or the bullseye on the second dart to make sure they have a better chance of leaving a finish but th this gives Dieter at least six starts from the 150. Another steady ton leaves her on 50. Uh, I'm very intrigued as we potentially approach the end of this game by the tattoo on Kersey's left arm because it sort of looks like a dart and it sort of looks like a bumblebee or a butterfly or something uh, and her flights are black and yellow so I wonder if there's some connection there. Uh, unfortunately, my finish isn't what it could be, so uh, I won't be able to ask her. But, uh, you know, one of the more intriguing tattoos I've seen this week. Um, I know you will be doing interviews before the WDF World Championship. So next year when Kersey is in it, perhaps <laughs> you can ask a question. Yes, I have to I'll try and recruit a translator, hopefully, who can help me. Tita uh, made a bit of a mess of that with the single 15, single 17. Missed a match start on double nine. Can Kersey punish her? A 1 3 2. Goes bullseye first, so treble 19 now to leave a shot at the bull. Everyone would love to see that finish. I can't think of a finish that is more popular than the 132 finish. I mean, the 170 is always great, but it's just something extra spicy about that 132. Yeah. I think anything that you involves the ball twice, I think, yeah. is always a, it's a bit of extra flair, which people always like. Comes inside on the nine, so she'll only get one more da a double in this leg. And it's a double three. Why is the Richard Ashdown special double three? Kersey now 84. She really has to take this to keep her hopes of a place in the final alive. Opens up on 20. She's got 64 left. 14 for Bullseye. Finds the big 14. Oh, that's a really good effort, but just narrowly misses on the wire so now Dieter Hedman with potentially another free match starts from here quite low the first start there Three. just inside Kirsty gets an unexpected chance here on 25 uh, I was going to give the finish a different name then but uh, I probably shouldn't because I'll get myself cancelled. So, uh, likely going to go big nine here for double eight. Two shots at it to make it a 5-3 game. Narrowly inside, so she'll switch to the fours. Just outside. So Dita comes back for three. And don't underestimate how hard it is to hit that single one right now. That's a good dart. Not in the way of the treble. So a clear bet to aim at. One. 
A lot of nervous energy in the room now. Kersey with three darts to try and take out eight. I'm nervous for them. It's the double four, five from three. Deesa missed a clutch of match darts in that leg. And, uh, well, could they come back to bite her? Remains to be seen how Kersey starts this ninth leg of the semi second semi-final. And this could become quite exciting because Dieter throughout the match has dropped leg by leg, I would say, not just in, in the averages, but just in the whole, in all parts of the game, it hasn't been as good as it was in the start. So therefore, she, she will know that as well. She will know that she would very much like to finish this off now. She doesn't want the game to go on much longer than this. No, because then the longer this goes, the more those misses become, you know, if you miss a load of darts and then win it in the next leg, that's fine. But if you miss them and then you lose the next one as well, suddenly, you know, as uh, Sir Alex Ferguson once termed it, squeaky bum time. So uh, I don't know if we can use that in a darts context, but, you know, if it's suddenly a 5-4 game or a 5-5 game, we were definitely approaching squeaky bum time. Or Fergie time, whatever you like <laughs> to call it. You may just come out on top in the end. Done there from Kersey. Puts a little bit of pressure on Dieter in this leg. She's 110 behind. It is the Vinikainen throw, but these two have more or less uh, leveled out to a similar standard now. So there's not a lot in it. So it's really who gets down to a double first and then who needs more opportunities to take it out, so. Yeah, so to cite Rudstadt, who always say that it's it's about momentum. She may just be behind here, Kersey, but she is very much the player with the momentum right now. Yeah. I'm not quite sure. I just did the Bob Anderson finger point at the monitor. <laughs> not quite sure why. Um, but, you know, the crowd here in Esberg enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Big 180 for Kersey. She's on 102 after 12, and she's going to have at least six starts from here to make it a 5-4 game. She seemed dead and buried, you know, 5-1 down, but, uh, you know, she's hanging on in there, and, you know, she's taking her chances. Which, you know, is always the mantra of darts, you beat what's in front of you. And the last couple of legs, she's managed to do that. But Deezer will be looking to apply pressure here. Drifts into the single five. And even though Deezer hasn't played to the best of her ability for the last few legs, then it's also positive for, for Kersey that she she hasn't shaken her head when, when she was four legs behind. She has stayed focused. And this is a very professional job so far. She is trying to beat what is in front of her, as you say. Credit to her. Finds it. So dart 18 darts are there for Percy Vinikainen. And we are now 5-4. And suddenly, we've got a very close game on our hands. Dita here got the throw in the 10th leg. As you said, she'll be hoping that she can wrap it up this time because if we have to have the bull up on the stage, I think we're going to get a lot of nervous energy. That's a brilliant start to the leg by Dita. I was just about to say that even though she has to throw here, I actually looked at Kersey as the favorite for the match. But that to, to do that under such pressure and in, in, at this point of the match, that's brilliant by Dita. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think, 
you know, that's a really positive start. Kersey only with a 60, so another big visit here, or a steady visit from, from Dieter, very much puts her back in the driving seat, and as you were saying, the momentum then swings in her direction once again. But a fairly loose final dart, only a 38, so a ton here from Kersey, and we're back at level pegging. It's just so hard to predict the outcome <laughs> of this match right now. She is in the driving seat here, Dita, but still you have the feeling that she needs to fill in that treble bet because Kersey can... Yeah, that's a great last start by Dita because Kersey, she has proven that she can hit a 140 or 180 out of pretty much nothing, so she still is capable to put pressure put the pressure on Dita from this from this position yeah it's a it's it's a t it's a tough game now a grueling game for both players up there um, and you made a very good point earlier Andrew that these players aren't used to playing this long a format and there it may not sound like it but there's a huge difference between playing best of seven, even best of nine, to playing potentially 11 legs. So this is something that I'm not sure Kersey has tried this before, surely not on a stage, to be playing in the 10th leg of a match. This, you need some stamina, you, you need to be focused on a, on a longer period of time, which isn't at all as easy as it sounds. No. No, no, it's, it's consistency as well is the hardest thing to maintain over those, you know, 11 legs or, you know, whatever, when you're not necessarily used to it. I know there are some floor tournaments in, in Europe, certainly, where, you know, they start with best of five, which is a brutal format, can often lead to a lot of upsets, but, you know, you build up to maximum best of nine, and that's only really in the final, where, you know, these ladies are now playing... You know, best of 11, and I, you know, I think it's best of 13 in the final a little bit later on. So, whoever wins this, they know they've got well, one, it's a tough assignment because they're playing Bo Greaves, but also potentially, if you're hanging with them, it's another very long game at the end of you know, what's, what's a, a physically quite draining week with you playing the team event, the pairs event, the singles, especially when these ladies have done as well as they have. You know, England got to the semi final of the team event. Dita won the pairs with Bo. She's obviously here in the single semi-finals. Kersey got to the pairs final here in the single semi-final. And uh, I believe Finland got to the quarter-finals of the women's team event yesterday. So these ladies have played every day and they played a lot of darts every day this week. So to then come here and, and get sucked into a real gruelling back-and-forth clash like this, it does take it out of you and puts you under a lot of pressure. Um, Lovely find with that last start. Kersey's on 106. But Dita will come in for 92. She missed a lot of match starts earlier. Can she convert now to seal victory? That's a single five. So 67 left. Treble 17 will be the option. That leaves 64, so Percy is in no way out of this match yet. No. I think the other thing is these are both two very methodical players. You know, they're not the fastest throwers in the world, which means that when the game does go on longer... It's very hard to find a rhythm. Yeah, and also means you're on your feet for a lot longer, which, you know, tires you out. But a good find with the first start, and she finds a single six... A shot at tops for a 106 to level the game. <laughs> Just too high from Vinnie Kainen. So Hedman comes back for 64. Pressure darts here for the England veteran. Single 16. She finds a second. So one dart at the double. Falls very low into the single seven, just 39 scored there, so 
three darts at tops. Bit of a sigh from Kirsty there as she approaches the board. She knows these are big darts here. Right in the middle of the bed. First dart, five all. Now we get the bullet on stage. So the standard may not have been as high as it was in the first semi-final, but we certainly get a more exciting match, let's say that. Certainly a very dramatic match here. Dieter's first are outside the bull. So if Kersey's is also outside, they measure they measure the distance. And referee Marco Meyer decides that Finland's yeah. dart was closer. So Kersi Vinikainen has the darts in this final leg. Takes a second to compose herself. Uh, and here we go in leg number 11 of this singles final. Didn't look like we were going to get to this stage, Daniel, when it was 5-1 uh, to Dieter Edmund. But Kersi has gritted her teeth, dug in and battled back. And it's kind of a combination that Kersey has been playing better. She has certainly been efficient on her doubles when, he, when she has had the chance, but a part of the story very much is that Dita is not all playing as good as she was in the start of the match. No, certainly not, but you know, it's, it's, a, tough, it's a tough game and I say Kersey's hung in there. She is capable of more, I think, in terms of scoring and so on than she's shown here but she's hung on in there in this game uh, we apologize for the temporary loss of the scoreboard uh, i'm sure our friends from dark connect who are in the venue will have it back up soon and there we go kersey down to 380 after six darts Tita back on 460 plus these so kersey with a slight advantage after the first couple of throws but not a lot in it as there hasn't been for much of this game and this is where Dieter will be thinking all right now now i've got a chance she will be relieved that cursey didn't hit a triple because that means there's not that much pressure. Of course there's pressure. This is the last leg decider in a semi-final, but it will give an opportunity, but also an opportunity that wasn't really used. Slightly loose one there from Kersey into the single one. Not able to find a treble. This is the sort of visit that, you know, as you say, Hedman will be thinking, I've got to punish this. I need to find at least one treble here and, and make a real dent in the scoreboard to, to get myself in front. Knowing that she's missed a, a, a clutch of match darts already. A great find with that last dart, 83 from Hedman. Applies a bit of pressure, puts herself 22 points in the lead. So opts to start at the in the 19s. That's a brilliant last start as well. Keeps her in front. Yeah. A great catch, as uh, our learned friends from New Zealand have been saying this week. Having spent a lot of time with their men's team this week, they. Uh, Every time you found a treble with your last visit uh, and it was a, a tough shot to find a treble, they always said to each other, good catch, bro. So I feel like that's an expression I need to use now. Uh, so yes, that was a good catch from Kersey to find that treble 19. Thank you. 
So 122 here for Kersey for the match after being 5-1 down. All right, just a single 18 or a triple 18 will secure Kersey a dart for the match. This is a scenario that <laughs> I certainly <laughs> didn't think was possible back when Dieter was in front, 5-1, but it's it's a dart in the single four. So Dieter can now focus on the 1-1-2. One, one, she needs a big treble on this one. Yeah, you feel this has got to go with Kersey finding the treble 16 on that last start. She's just got 16 to go. Perfect start from Hedman. She'll go for 12. Oh, you could hear the crowd after that first start. Now another match starts for Dieter. Just inside. <laughs> could cut the atmosphere with a knife here in the blue water dock and three darts for Kersey Vinikainen. Takes a minute to compose herself, the Finn. Now match darts of her own. First one is inside, so she'll switch to the fours. Long way away, the first one. <laughs> yeah, these these are really stressful and nervous moments for for Kersey here, which is totally understandable. And why is it? Hedman comes back. She gets a reprieve. Three darts here at double ten. She's been here before with match darts. <laughs> Just breathes out. This is where she needs all of her veteran experience. Close with the first one. Is that a helpful <laughs> marker? <laughs> very, very Close. fine margins here. They were all three very good from <laughs> darts, but... There are a few yes. people in the building thought the first one was in, so. Big moment here for Kersey. Three darts at eight. Inside, we switch down the board to two. Double two. Busts it. Hedman is back again in what has been an incredibly dramatic semi-final here. Three more chances for Hedman. She doesn't normally miss these. Yeah, you give her a second chance and she will punish you. Your second semi finalist here in the 2023 WF World Cup Women's Singles is Dieter Hedman. Survives a dramatic comeback from Kirsty Vinikainen. Both players unlucky to lose that one in the end, then. Yeah, it's, it's hard to argue that Kirsty didn't, in some way or another, deserve a. Uh, well, a place in the final, but it is Dieter who comes through after being 5-1 in front. Kersey made a brilliant comeback, but in the end it is Dieter who will play Bo Greaves in the final here in the Granley Hockey Arena. It's been a brilliant semi-final between the two great female players, and I certainly can't wait for the final. But we have to wait a bit longer because, first of all, we need to see the two men's semi-finals. The first will be between Carl Zarola from Catalonia and Barry van Peer from Holland. Then it's Robbie Mills against Frank Bruns from Germany. So stay tuned and we will be ready for the men's semi-finals in just a few moments' time. <laughs> 